Wilkesbury Red Barons tonight. Pitch from Thomas. Hit in the right field, going to the gap. Extra bases for Manahan. Gilbert's going to third. Monahan will have a double, an RBI double at that as Gilbert comes all the way around to score. There's the pitch. Hit into right field, another base hit for Jordan and misplayed ball out in right field and coming around to score is Monahan and Jordan will go to second on the air by the right fielder. And did not swing to end the game yesterday in a 4-3 decision. But he's going to make up for it here, a shot in the right field center and the gap and Holyfield's going to have extra bases. Lieberthal is going to third. Lieberthal will come around to score as Holyfield's going for a triple and he got it. An RBI triple for Holyfield getting out of his slump, scoring Lieberthal. So now the Red Barons ahead five to two. Gilbert is in. Gilbert smacks one up the middle. That could be the game winner. Lieberthal will come around. He will score. And that's the ball game as it's an RBI, game-winning RBI single for Sean Gilbert, who scores Lieberthal to end the game. So the scranton Wilkesbury Red Barons win it here tonight. In the ninth inning, Barons win it 6-5 to five over the Braves. We'll be in Rochester coming up this weekend. Tomorrow, the final game of the four-game series with the Richmond Braves on the scranton Wilkesbury Red Barons television network. The final score tonight. The Red Baron six, the Braves five. For Cindy, I'm Phil. We're interns. Good night. I even have the uh, where it is on the, the Steve Tate Sports People One app. That's what it's like. 45. The average major league fastball is 85 miles per hour. This Pottsville senior is anything but average. Jeff Yoder. <laughs> Philadelphia Phillies outfielder Craig Jeffries is doing his part to help the game's image. How's that? Thanks a lot. Bro. All right. The hottest team in Major League Baseball is in town tonight, the Philadelphia Phillies in Lackawanna County Stadium. But after an eight months work stoppage, have the fans forgiven the big leaguers? I've been a Phillies fan all my life, and I love the game, and I'm glad the strike's over. And I support them. I'll be back. I forgive them. Judging by the 10,000 plus on hand tonight, many fans in this area have forgiven and are just glad to see their favorite big leaguers back in uniform playing the game again. Charlie Hayes! I think in Philadelphia, uh, it's a little down, but uh, not as much as it is, as it is in other areas. But, uh, you know, you're, that's probably what you're going to have to expect for a while until um, they get a settlement, you know, until the fans uh, know that baseball's back the way it was. The Phillies, with a record of 17-6, and six, are the best team in baseball, at least for the moment. And if the winning continues, that may be the best prescription for a post-strike hangover. From Lackawanna County Stadium, Phil Shaner, Newswatch 16 Sports. Thanks, Tim. Round one qualified of the Miller Genuine Draft 500 Pocono International Raceway here today. The story before we get to the qualifying, Rusty Wallace in his Miller Genuine Draft car was set to qualify 38th here today, but he was disqualified. He did not pass the post 
uh, qualifying inspections. A problem with his air deflecting flap on his roof. So Wallace today, not a chance to qualify. The heat was the story today, 101 degree air temperature, 160 degree temperature on the track. There was also problems on the track in qualifying. Ricky Craven, the rookie driver here in his Kodak Chevrolet, cracks up on turn two. Not a pretty sight. Also touching the wall on turn two, Dale Earnhardt. But Earnhardt was fast enough to qualify fifth for Sunday's race. Finishing fourth, Kenny Schrader, followed by Morgan Shepard in the third spot. And finishing second, as we take a look now here at Mark Martin with the best practice time, but he qualifies second with 161.993 miles per hour. So he'll be second for Sunday's big race. But it was Bill Elliott getting the pole for the first time in this 1995 season. Elliott around the track here with a time of 162.496 miles per hour. We had a chance to talk to Bill Elliott after he had a great qualifying time. Well, regardless if we get the pole or not, I feel like we got it anyway. I mean, because this is how much this guy, these guys have come together here in the last several weeks, and it's really paid off. I'll tell you, it really has. That's Elliott's first pole since the Darlington race in 94, so he's pumped up for that fact. He'll be on the pole in the Ford on Sunday. A big day for Ford. The front row is completely all Ford drivers, so the folks at Ford are psyched up for Sunday's Miller and Genuine Draft 500. By the way, Berwick's Jimmy Spencer, he qualified 30th. That's not good enough to get him in for Sunday's race, so he'll be back here tomorrow trying to qualify for the big race on Sunday. That's the story from Pocono International Raceway. Dodgers catcher Mike Piazza, even this year's Major League All-Star MVP, Jeff Conine have all competed in the AAA All-Star game before becoming big names in the big leagues. Last night it was the big league stars in Arlington, Texas. Tonight here at Lackawanna County Stadium, it's the future stars showing off tonight. Jason Eisringhausen of Norfolk pitching for the National League stars. He'll get his shot in the show Monday for the New York Mets in Wrigley Field. Derek Jeter, another up-and-coming star, the Yankees' top prospect at shortstop. Jeter hitting 313 for Columbus. He's showing off his star status tonight. And how about Louis Lopez of Buffalo with three hits? Look for him in October in a Cleveland Indians uniform. Lopez, the star that shined the brightest on this year's AAA game. Lopez named the game's most valuable player for the second straight year. Well, this is my second one. I won it last year. And you know, I've been blessed again to win it again, and you know, it's good to be here, and it's, you know, it's a lot of fun. Real chance to show off in front of your peers, huh? Well, you know, I've, I've, I've been showing off a while now, <laughs> so, you know, with the strike and, you know, different things, you know, things take place, but I tell you what, it's, it's, it's always good to have a good game anytime they're around. The 10,000-plus fans on hand at the stadium should hold on to their programs, scorecards, and memories of tonight's big event to then look back some five years down the road to see if names like Eisringhausen, Jeter, Lopez have made it big in the big leagues. And then they can say, I saw them when. From Lackawanna County Stadium, Phil Shaner, Newswatch 16 Sports. Phil Shader is here with sports. Phil, the Red Barons are on a roll. Yes, they certainly are. Red Barons are red hot, winning 13 of 18 games, now in second place in their International League East Division. Just three and a half games back of Ottawa, the Red Barons looking to continue their success tonight at the stadium against Rochester. We'll pick things up in the third. David Tokheim, RBI, single up the middle, scores Sean Gilbert. Red Barons up 1-0. Then Mike Lieberthal adds to that a double down the line, scoring Tokheim. Barons up 2-0 in the third. Now, Tom Marsh, he left the game in the fifth inning with a stomach virus. His replacement, Rick Holyfield, watch this, comes up big. Home run over the right field fence, and the Barons go up 3-0. Levy continues his big night, a solo shot down the left. That ball's out of here. The Red Barons put away Rochester 5-2 tonight. The Red Barons are red hot, but their big league parent club is not. Philadelphia is fading fast in the National League East. Five and a half games back of first place Braves. The Phillies have lost eight of their last ten games, looking for some relief tonight at Three Rivers Stadium in Pittsburgh. A John Cruck sighting. No, that guy is certainly a lot skinnier than the Crucker. Jim 
Eisenreich, two runs single to left, scoring Moore and Dini, and Jeffrey slides in. Phillies up 2 nothing. things looking good in the second. Charlie's Hayes, his hot bat continues, knocking in Dave Hollins, made it 3 nothing in the third, but then things fall apart for the Phillies and pitcher Rick Batalico in the sixth inning. Broomfield, a home run down the left field line. The game is tied at three at one swing of the bat. And then Martin's two-run homer, that finishes off the Phillies as the Phillies lose tonight 7-3. to three. Jack McDowell facing his old mates, the White Sox. They beat up on him tonight. Blackjack giving up three homers. This one to David Martinez. It's an upper deck shot. McDowell gives up 13 hits and nine runs before being removed from the game in the fifth. McDowell hears it from the crowd and right there shows a gesture. No, he's not telling the fans they're number one. He shows no class in that act, and the Yankees lose tonight 11-4. To now to the team that's ahead of the class this year, the Cleveland Indians down 5-3 to, to California in the ninth, and then Albert Bell steps up with a bases-loaded homer off of Lee Smith, and the Indians are rolling for sure. Baseball magic in Cleveland. The Indians have won 14 of their last uh, at-bats. They've won the game. They've 25 come from behind wins. They win it tonight, Cleveland over California. And to the American League scoreboard, Baltimore over Texas. Mike Mussina wins his 10th game. Boston beats Kansas City. Roger Clemens picks up the win. And Toronto shuts out Minnesota. Seattle over Detroit. And there's the Cleveland, California score. And the A's are 0-5 on this road trip. And they're losing 4-0 in the 8th to Milwaukee. Pottsville High School pitcher Jeff Yoder is a shoe in to pitch at the next level. But the question is, is the next level college ball or the major leagues? The average Major League fastball is 85 miles per hour. This Pottsville senior is anything but average. Jeff Yoder has put up big league numbers this season. He has struck out 147 batters in 77 innings. With numbers like that comes a lot of big league attention. We've had uh, four or five kids who signed uh, Major League contracts. Uh, this kid has been scouted from day one. The first game he pitched in Bethlehem, we had 25, 26 scouts there. And we've averaged, I guess, 15 scouts at every ball game he's pitched since then. He pitched in a lot of Legion All-Stars and games, and he made the uh, final with Harrisburg Riverside last year. And uh, they had the East and the West, and he was one of the, what, the top three or four pitchers in the East. And uh, that's where I first uh, saw him, and he threw well that day. Loose arm, good body, good athlete, uh, knows how to pitch for a high school pitcher. And uh, his fastball is uh, outstanding, and he's... Uh, has an outstanding curveball for a high school pitcher. Yoder has a scholarship to pitch for Clemson University, but with talk of being selected in the first few rounds of the Major League Draft, Yoder is left with a big decision. Within the next two weeks, me and my mom and dad and my coach are going to sit down and really talk about it, but as far as I feel right now, I'm happy with Clemson, but it's going to take a really good offer from a professional team to, to get me to change my mind. Pottsville already has one alumnus pitching in the major leagues, and many believe that Yoder may be the second. Chris Nabholtz, a 1984 graduate of Pottsville, is a much different pitcher than Yoder. Nabby is a long-armed lefty that relies on off-speed stuff in the pros. Jeff is a hard-throwing right-hander whose heat is hard to beat. Other differences between the two pitchers is Nabby's in the big show, and Yoder hopes to be there soon. He really helped, he helped me a lot mentally with the game, and oh, it's, it's been a dream all my life. I mean... If the offer's right, like I said before, it's, if the offer's right for me when I get drafted, then I'll take it. Former Penn State football stars Kerry Collins and Kyle Brady going from college students, athletes, to young NFL millionaires. Brady, the Jets' number one pick, agreeing to a four-year deal today worth $5.1 million. It's the largest contract ever for a rookie tight end. Collins still floating after assigning a seven-year deal worth $23 million. The Carolina Panthers quarterback knows money can't buy experience. You know, with a contract like that, you know, I think the expectations are going to be high. And, um, you know, probably there's going to be some unrealistic expectations because... You know, I'm, I'm not going to be able to set the world on fire. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day, but, uh, you know, I'm just going to keep working hard. $23 million, a lot of money for Kerry Collins. How is he ever going to spend that all? Well, I know one thing he's going to do, pay back his full scholarship to Penn State, also set up a charity fund, so he's going to do some good things with the money. Oh, no doubt. Thank you very much, Bill. Thank you.
The Red Barons were 18 and 32 in April and May. Now in June and July, they're 36 and 16. What a turnaround! Why and how did the Barons do it? The why is the time put in the batting cage. The how is with the bat. Six of the top 10 hitters in the International League are Red Barons. When the summer moved in, the Barons' bats started to sizzle. Rob Butler got things going in June with a 14.